The Miami Hurricanes will beat the Duke Blue Devils on Saturday if you are locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I am Alex Dono, your host. I'm a University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet and contributor to allhurricanes.com. Happy Friday, and thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. Today's episode is brought to you by Underdog. Sign up on underdogfantasy.com with the promo code Locked On and get your first deposit doubled up to 100 bucks. So here we go, heading into another ACC Coastal adventure. Final year of the Coastal, remember. Hurricanes will host the Duke Blue Devils on Saturday, 12.30 p.m. at Hard Rock Stadium. Miami's a nine-point favorite in this game, which I think is a little bit too much, but I do think the Hurricanes can and win the game. And I'll give you my five keys, and we'll read some of yours as well. Key number one for these Canes against Riley Leonard, the talented Duke quarterback, You've got to keep him contained. Do not let Riley Leonard break contained. He's Duke's number one rusher this year with 420 yards. And a lot of his success running the football comes from escaping the pocket and scrambling rather than just designed runs. So if Miami wants to continue being one of the top rushing defenses in America, they rank 13th in the country, by the way. You've got to keep Leonard stuck in that pocket. Georgia Tech actually did a nice job against him. Miami's D linemen and linebackers will have to be disciplined in this one. And I'm not just talking disciplined like don't commit 17 penalties disciplined. I'm talking about gap assignments. Uh, And listen, we've seen clearly, and Miami's got a big, hefty rotation of defensive linemen who have overall done a really nice job, but we know who the top guys are on that front four and are the ones that are really going to have to make the difference here. Akeem Mesador has been one of the best edge rushers in the country, midseason All-American he was named this week. Leonard Taylor, very dangerous. Daryl Jackson, another transfer like Mesador. Uh, he came into Jackson from Maryland. He's been excellent at defensive tackle this year with that six foot six frame. And Jafari Harvey has been very good, especially in recent games. And with Miami's linebackers, you talk about playing discipline. That's something Corey Flagg's done a really, really good job of all season. And we've been seeing the true freshman, the pup, Wesley Besaint, has been ascending. In the last couple of games, Keontre Smith had a good game last week. We'll see if Wayman Steed gets cleared to play this week. We're unsure of that. He didn't play last week. But, yeah, Miami's uh, Miami's linebackers and defensive line, we'll talk about the secondary uh, later, believe me. But you have got to keep Riley Leonard contained. Try to turn him into a one-dimensional quarterback. Yeah, Duke's got some weapons in the passing game. He's a good passer as well. But, If you can keep him from really beating you and moving the chains and scoring touchdowns with his legs, this game's going to be a lot easier to win. So that's number one. Number two, let's go over to Miami's offense for this one. Something that's been frustrating us all season long. The Hurricanes need to find ways to score touchdowns in the red zone, please. (laughs) Even though, so Duke, uh, they've got some vulnerabilities on defense. Uh, like their passing defense, they rank 99th in the country. They give up um, 99 in yards given up, I should say. And their rushing defense is right in the middle, 65th in the country. However, they bend but don't break Duke's defense. So they're 99th in passing yards given up, 65th in rushing yards, but they're just 39th in the country in points allowed. That's pretty good. Uh, where Miami's offense has kind of been the opposite, right? They put up a ton of yards, but they don't score a lot of points. They don't score a lot of points in the red zone. So Miami's offensive trends kind of feed right into what Duke does well, and that's bend, don't break. So you've got to be more efficient and more creative in the red zone. Miami needs better effort from their offensive line and running backs in short yardage. And the Hurricanes also, they need to find a way just to be more creative, more aggressive when they're near the end zone. Because now there's really no excuses not to find 
receivers open in the end zone these days, or at least putting your receivers, your tall receivers in a position to make catches in the, in the red zone, because Tyler, now you got multiple targets at six foot five, like Colby young, who's been emerging big time the last couple of weeks, Jaleel Skinner, another true freshman who's getting better, the tight end and Will Mallory, assuming he plays this week. I hope he does. That's another big target. You know, as usual, you're going up against defensive backs that are 5'10", 5'11". I think they've got one or two guys who are six foot in their defensive back rotation. But you're going to have a big advantage when it comes to height and when it comes to guys bringing down contested balls. So please, you have to take advantage of that. That's number two. Key number three, if it doesn't happen this week, I don't know when it's going to happen. It's time to run the football again. Now, one complication here is I can't say for sure, and I don't know if anyone except maybe Mario could say for sure right now if Henry Parrish is going to be back this week because I thought he was going to be on the field last week and he was a late scratch. I'm hopeful that Parrish plays. Now, when it comes to the offensive line, I highly doubt we see Zion Nelson back this week. Because when Cristobal says about him on Monday, we're taking it slow with Zion, you never want to hear that, right? Whether it's someone you're dating or you want to know if your offensive lineman's going to play. Whenever someone says we're taking it slow, that, that's, not, that's not usually something you want to hear. So to say we're taking it slow with Zion doesn't make me too confident that he's going to play this week. But we do know 100% that Ja'Kai Clark, the starting center, is back, which could give you a boost. Obviously, that could give you a boost in fewer penalties because your O-line's in more sync without the false starts. It's going to help you in the running game, pass protection. But um, the Canes offense, why, you know, we need to see Miami run the football again, even if the passing game is lit the way it's been the last couple of weeks. At no point this season has Miami's offense had any balance whatsoever. Early in the year, the running game was way up and the passing game was down. Now the passing game has been all the way up and the running game has been all the way down. If you need to give more carries, by the way, to someone like Thad Franklin, who's, you know, as usual, uh, he's not been perfect, but he's been running hard. He's got that size. And Lucius Stanley, who's been running really hard. So if you need to give more carries to guys like Thad Franklin and Lucius Stanley, and maybe a few less carries to Jalen Knighton and Henry Parrish if he plays, so be it. I don't care about hurting feelings. I care about getting the most productive backs out there. And also on the O-line, I would like to see big Inez Cooper get some more reps. Like I, I was looking at his snap count. He's only had 49 snaps, I think, all season. That dude's a bully up front. I want to see that guy get more reps. Uh, in Miami's past three games, they rushed for 60 yards against Middle Tennessee, 42 yards against North Carolina, and 107 yards against Virginia Tech. None of that is good enough, and all of that came on the heels, by the way, of running for 175 yards against Texas A&M. So the running game has taken a major, major dip. We need that to pick up, right? We need to bring balance back to this offense because even if Tyler Van Dyke has another big day throwing the football, if Miami can't run again, it's going to be hard to win. And I'll remind people, these aren't your daddy's Blue Devils football team, basketball school, but the football team's pretty good this year. Like, if you make the same mistakes that you made against Virginia Tech and you still came away with a six-point win, you make those same mistakes against Duke, you're losing by a touchdown or more, okay? So Miami has to be better, and that includes running the football, all right? Fourth key to the game, Miami's defensive secondary needs to communicate well, and they need to stay disciplined. All of those long passing plays they gave up against Middle Tennessee, the long passing plays they gave up against North Carolina, that was missed assignments, poor communication, good old-fashioned busted coverages. Uh, this is another quarterback who can make you pay. Now, Miami didn't give up a lot of chunk plays against Virginia Tech, but Grant Wells also stinks, <laughs> okay? So... You know, the quarterback you're facing this week, Riley Leonard, he doesn't stink. He smells great, okay? So you're going to need to be better when it comes to playing assignment football in the defensive secondary. Um, Duke's offense, they're actually one of the better ACC offenses when it comes to chunk yardage. They rank third in the conference with six passing plays of 40 or more yards this year. 
And they've got a couple of really good receivers to watch. Jalen Calhoun averages over 14 yards per catch. He's got a couple of receiving touchdowns this year. Eli Pankol, a deep threat. He averages over 16 yards per catch this season. So they have receivers who are going to challenge Miami's defensive secondary. And I hope my guy DJ Ivy, who's been overall pretty good this year, he's been trending up. I hope he keeps on doing that. I hope we see Cam Kinchins get an interception or two. And I hope we see James Williams at his very best because he's been inconsistent at times this year. And I think Tyreek Stevenson's going to be back this week. If he is, I need to see Tyreek at his very best this year. So we'll have our final key to the game. We'll have you guys' keys because you've been tweeting us at Locked on Canes. If you tweet us at Locked on Canes, we'll probably read your tweet on the show or we'll answer it on Twitter. And if you follow us at Locked on Canes, we will follow you back. Plus, a very interesting update on the University of Miami football facilities. Because remember, everything we talk about with recruiting, you want to win games. You want, uh, you know, the coaches to show these guys that they're they're committed to them. They're feeling the love. And you also want to be able to show these commits that your facilities are top notch compared to the big boys around college football. So we have a pretty important update on that coming up. And we're going to take a look at some of the odds for this game a little bit later on as well. So all that means, guys, is we have a lot to come here on Locked on Canes. Do not go anywhere. This episode is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy the easiest place to spice up college football season. Guys, I'm all over Underdog every single week. It's so easy to get started. You sign up at underdogfantasy.com for the Underdog app, which is my preferred way to do it. It's a free app on your iPhone or your Android. And then you quickly sign up and get started. Guys, uh, I love with college football playing the pick em games, the higher or lower. Let me share with you my selections for this weekend, okay? Because you guys can play along with me or you can fade my picks if you think I'm bad luck, okay? In the Syracuse at Clemson game, I will take Cuse's Sean Tucker lower than 93 and a half rushing yards this week because Clemson is really tough to run against. Uh, but for Syracuse, I will take my guy, Aronde Gadsden the second. I will take him higher than 66 and a half receiving yards in that game. And there's another selection that I like, and you may be surprised by this one, but in the Ohio State Iowa game, I'm going to take Ohio State quarterback CJ Stroud lower than 30 and a half passing yards. That's a really high number. And the Hawkeyes defense, they only give up 154 passing yards per game. So I think Ohio State blows them out. I just don't think C.J. Stroud throws for over 300 and a half passing yards. So I'm going to take the lower on that one. So, guys, you can go to Underdog and make your own picks just like I did. Use my picks. Use your own picks. Fade my picks. It's so easy to play, and it's available in over 30 states. You just pick between two and five players across any team, not just Arcanes, and decide if they're going to finish higher or lower. It's one of the easiest fantasy to play games out there, and you can win cold, hard cash in a single game. So sign up with our promo code Locked On. That's all one word. And Underdog will double your first deposit up to 100 bucks. So you deposit 100 bucks, they give you 100 bucks on top of that for free. Go to underdogfantasy.com or find the Underdog Fantasy app. That's Underdog Fantasy promo code locked on. Get in on the college football pick 'em action today. And thank you so much for making Locked On Canes your first listen today. We're part of the awesome Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And if you're watching us on YouTube, Make sure to smash that like button and subscribe to our channel and subscribe to our audio channels as well on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Odyssey, or wherever you get your pods. So keys to the game. Let me give you my number five, and then I'll give you one that people wanted me to throw in here, but I refuse. I refuse to throw in this key. But the one that I will throw in, number five, I think this is an obvious coming out of last week's game. Keep the penalties to a minimum. Miami, heading into the Virginia Tech game, was actually one of the least penalized teams in America. They were top 20 in fewest penalties. So, okay, show us that the 17 flags for 159 yards last week, show us that that was a fluke. Because you could do that and still beat Virginia Tech, but you will not beat Mike Elko's Blue, uh, Duke Blue Devils. I was, I was about to say Blue Do Devils. It's been a long week, guys. You will not beat Mike Elko's team if you're spotting them a football field and a half of free yards. Believe me. So that's my final key. Keep the penalties to a minimum. The top four were 
Do not let Riley Leonard break contain. Do not let their quarterback beat you with his legs. Number two, Miami needs to score touchdowns in the red zone. Number three, it's time to run the football again, okay? And I don't care who the leading rusher is. It could be a walk-on that we've never even heard of. <laughs> I don't care. Bring somebody out of the stands. If they rush for 100 yards, I will take it. I don't care if it's Lucius Stanley, who's been running hard, if it's Devon Perry, if it's Thad Franklin, who I believe deserves more carries, uh, if Jalen Knighton can actually find his deadly stuff again, and if Henry Parrish is back this week, I don't care who it is. I want this team to rush for, here's the number I'll give you. I want Miami to rush for over 150 team yards. If they can do that, I will be satisfied. If they can't do that, I'm still going to be talking to you on Monday about how I'm disappointed with the running game. So that was key number three. Key number four, defensive secondary needs to mind their P's and Q's this week because Duke has picked up a lot of chunk yardage this year, and Miami has been vulnerable to that. And then number five, Keep the laundry, keep the flags, the penalties to a minimum. You guys have been tweeting us at Locked on Canes. And if you tweet us there, you could get a tweet read on the show. If you follow us at Locked on Canes, we will follow you back. Zach says his keys, starting strong, running successfully through the throat of their defense, and sacks on sacks on sacks. Ooh, I'm glad you brought up sacks because I didn't bring up sacks, but... Yeah, um, I I trust Miami is going to create sacks in this game, right? Because Akeem Mesidor has been virtually unblockable. And, you know, if, if Leonard Taylor is fully healthy and if he wakes up feeling dangerous on Saturday, uh, he's obviously a really, really matchup, really tough matchup nightmare. Because you think about this, a lot of the standout players – on on Miami's team on either side of the football right the guys that like opposing coaches actually have to like game plan against right a lot of those guys are on the defensive line right you're thinking about which players actually you know make opposing coaches sweat a little bit when they're coming up with their game plans Mesidor is obviously one of those guys like coaches are thinking how can we keep this guy off the stat sheet? How can we keep him from getting the TFLs and the sacks? Leonard Taylor is obviously one of those guys as well. Uh, maybe Daryl Jackson. I'm not sure if he's quite at that level yet, but he could be becoming one of those guys. You know, on offense, obviously, it's really Tyler Van Dyke and Colby Young this week and Will Mallory if he plays. Uh, I don't necessarily know if any of Miami's running backs are in that category right now, but Henry Parrish is a fine player if he is healthy enough to go. But a, a lot of the uh, a lot of the Miami players, like Cam Kinchins is another one, but a lot of these guys that like opposing coaches really have to think about, a couple of those at least are on Miami's defensive line. So I, I like that there from Zach. Sacks on sacks on sacks. Big Dan, 305, one of our favorites. He says, play a clean game, no penalties, and please don't give up the big play. You and I are very much on the same wavelength, Dan. We think alike. State of Miami podcast tweets to us, contain their quarterback. Do not let him run wild. Yeah, I mean, Leonard is a fine passer, but if you can turn him into a pocket passer and you can make his game one-dimensional, you've got a really good chance of winning this football game, okay? So I completely co-sign on what State of Miami says. Uh, Jacksonville Canes fan says, score more points than they do. Brilliant analysis, Jax Kane fan. <laughs> we love you anyway. Uh, Solo B says, touchdowns in the red zone. Thank you. Uh, Otto tweets, four quarters of solid offensive line play, allowing for creative and confident passing game. On defense, I'd like to see flag, Besaint, and the linebackers fly around filling gaps, no missed tackles, and preventing Riley Leonard from making big plays. Yeah, if the Hurricanes play just smart on defense and, you know, Duke Duke doesn't turn the football over a whole lot. Um, their defense also, they don't really create interceptions, but they have forced a lot. I think Duke has forced nine fumbles this year. So I'm looking at Jalen Knighton. Please do not put the ball on the turf for no reason this week, right? Duke doesn't force a lot of interceptions. They force a lot of fumbles. I don't know if that's just like a fluky lucky thing or if they just they they tackle so well and they're knocking balls loose and that's just something that their defensive players are good at. But yeah, we need to take care of the football. We do. And I would love to see Miami create some turnovers. I'd love to see Kenshin score a, a pick six or my guy James Williams to get a pick six, something like that. Give it to me. Give it to me. 
Um, so by the way, we got uh, an update. So Dan Radakovich, the Miami athletic director, he spoke midweek because Miami had basketball media day on Thursday. But listen, you know, the athletic director is available. You're going to ask him some football questions. That's just the nature of the beast, even if you're you're talking about basketball season. And Radakovich was asked about updates on the football facilities. And he says, nothing really from a construction standpoint right now, he said. We're getting really close. We've had conversations yesterday as it related to the contractor, getting close to selecting the contractor. Our architects are continuing to draw the building and move forward with those opportunities. We have a board meeting later this week. That's good news where we'll continue to talk through our fundraising opportunities. I think here there's a lot of pieces of it that are out there. He said, quote, we want to make sure that this building is the forever home of the football program. We've talked about that in the past. And what that'll do is once that's pulled together, it's going to open up opportunities for other parts of our athletic program. Everything's moving along at a good pace, and we will continue to update as things present themselves. Now, Radakovich, you, know, you saw all the fundraising efforts and the facilities upgrades that he was a part of at Clemson. I trust him to get all of that done, and I trust him to get it done with the utmost quality, right? Because what Miami is reportedly going to spend, and this is just on their on-campus practice and day-to-day -day facilities, they're going to put $100 million into upgrades there. $100 million. $100 million if I do my Dr. Evil. That's a lot of money for on-campus facilities. And how important that's going to be to recruiting, right? Because so many of you and so many of us, we talk about oh, whether or not Miami should build a new stadium, right? Do they need a new football stadium? But think about it this way. I'm not saying stadiums aren't important, but your football stadium is somewhere where you, you know, you play games six or seven times a year at your home stadium. Your day-to-day -day facilities are virtually 365, Right. I mean, even when it's the off season, guys are working out, guys are training. That's your home base. That's your locker room. That's where you get together every single day. Like it's even more important. Stadiums are important, but on campus facilities, practice facilities, I think are five, if not 10 times more important than the stadium. Because when recruits come in, they see that stuff. When players get here, you know, if anyone's on the fence about, oh, do I go into the portal? Am I happy here? It makes a difference when you've got top-notch space age state-of-the-art facilities and that's what Miami wants to build here when we come back I want to look at the odds from bet online our awesome awesome betting partners so keep it locked right here on another awesome episode of locked on canes thank you so much for making locked on canes your first listen today so I already mentioned it once today and I've talked about it a couple of times this week I think Miami minus nine against Duke. And I think the number at one point this week was even at nine and a half. And then the last I checked it at bet online, it was back down to nine. I like Miami to win this game, but favored by nine points is too much. And for reference, the Miami Hurricanes this season are 0 and 5 against the spread. That obviously doesn't count Bethune Cookman, but against FBS teams this year. The Hurricanes have not covered the spread a single time this season. So what that tells me is the perception from the handicappers, the odds makers, and, you know, the general public who's betting on this game, on these games, that has not caught up to reality because reality is Miami wasn't, you know, eight and a half, nine points better than Virginia Tech last week. I don't believe Miami is nine points better than Duke this week. So you've got a couple of options here. Okay. Now, if you're a hardcore Canes fan like I am, anybody listening to this probably is, um, I don't make a habit out of betting against my teams because that's just psychotic behavior. So I'm probably going to sit this one out, at least as far as the point spread goes. I am not planning on betting Miami minus nine. I don't think they're going to cover that number. Uh, now, if you're the type who says, hey, I'm going to root for Miami, but I also I just want to make some money and I don't really care what I bet, then you should consider betting Duke plus nine, right? Like I, I don't like to advise people to bet against my teams, but I think in this case, that's the better play. So I'm going to sit it out. I'm not going to bet, you know, Duke plus nine, and I'm certainly not going to bet Miami minus nine. Uh, there is a prop that I find to be interesting here. 
prop bet at bet online any team to score 40 or more points in this game i feel pretty strongly about the no on that one miami's just not scoring that much against anybody outside of bethune cookman this year they haven't you know they haven't broken 40 points this season since the opener I think Miami wins this game, but I cannot trust this offense to score that much until I actually see it. So, uh, and I don't think Duke's going to break 40 either. So I would vote and I would bet no at minus 197. I know that that's, you know, it's a bigger, bigger number there. Minus, you know, you, you win, uh, you win a hundred dollars back on a $197 bet, but I think it's worth it because I feel pretty strongly that neither of these teams is going to score 40 or more points in this game. I'll give you my predicted final score, by the way. Canes win, yes, 33 to 27. I've got Miami 33 to 27 over Duke. Now, I noticed, and I didn't do this on purpose because I noticed this afterwards, that the over-under, I think, is it's either 57 or 59 points, something like that. Uh, and I do technically, my final score would be 60 combined points, but I don't feel strongly about that one to bet the over, just so you know. I'm probably going to sit that one out as well. Um, but I do like uh, neither team to score 40 or more points. Now, a couple of other games that I look at in the ACC, folks, I think this one is a huge opportunity uh, here. Pittsburgh plus two and a half at Louisville. The Pitt Panthers are underdogs against a pretty bad Louisville team. I think the wrong team is favored here. Like I know Louisville's the home team and that's, you know, it's usually worth about three points in college football. Pittsburgh's going to win that game straight up and they're two and a half point underdogs. Take the Pitt Panthers. Can my guy Israel Abanacanda get going again? The last time we saw that Pitt tailback, he was rushing for 320 yards. So I'm definitely going Pitt plus two and a half. Now this one, this one's interesting. The Clemson Syracuse game which is obviously the game of the week in the ACC. The Clemson Tigers, I think, might be favored by too much here. Clemson are 13.5-point favorites at home against 6-0 and ranked Syracuse. I keep going back and forth on this one, guys. So Syracuse, Cinderella this year, right? Um, they've gotten a little lucky this year because, you know, Purdue blew it. Um, you know, North Carolina state was not healthy when they played them and Devin Leary was out. So Syracuse has gotten a little lucky this year. And also they haven't played a real road game, like not a tough road game. Like they, they've been home five times. The only road game they've had was against UConn. So you go to death Valley, that's a different challenge. So I think those are the reasons why Clemson's favored by so much. Okay. Um, but Syracuse, again, they've been much better than expected this year, and they've given Clemson a tough time in recent seasons, right? Clemson only beat them by three points last year. You know, everyone remembers five years ago when Syracuse, all, all different players, obviously, but when Syracuse upset Clemson in 2017, um, I think Syracuse can fight and keep this one close. I think they can keep this within about 10 points. So I think Clemson minus 13 and a half, they're favored by too much. So I like I like Syracuse to keep it closer than that and cover the spread. Syracuse plus 13 and a half. And as always, thank you so much to our friends at Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. And I'm on Bet Online checking the spreads and I'm reading their info because they have awesome articles on the site. I am on there every single day. And guys, thank you so much for making Locked On Canes your first listen today. I hope you appreciated and enjoyed our keys to the game. And you can keep dropping yours, guys. If you want to leave us uh, an Apple Podcast review, make sure you leave us a five star review, please. Like, if you don't want to leave a five star review, maybe you do something else and you just don't leave a review, period. Leave us a five star review if you care to. And, and you can tell us uh, your prediction for this game and your keys to the game. You can leave us YouTube comments on our YouTube channel, Locked on Canes, with your keys to the game. And make sure you make Locked on ACC your second listen. Whether it's Candace Cooper hosting or Kenton Gibbs filling in this week, they do an awesome job taking you around the ACC in 30 minutes. Make Locked on ACC your second listen. Thank you for making us your first. We will talk to you again. I, I think we're, I don't know, we're definitely doing a post game tomorrow. We might sneak in a pregame as well. I'm thinking about it. We'll talk to you tomorrow for sure, before and or after the game on another episode of Locked on Canes, part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.